left laid out on the ground. And here comes the B play. It's been slowly developing over the course of the round. But this is what it comes down to. KNG looks to try and be the defender of the site. The breaker of dreams as it gets the double kill, the collateral, and it's all left on JW. It's done. He doesn't have the time. There's absolutely nothing he can do. We're heading into overtime here as KNG out of absolutely nowhere just domes another. Leaves only Fur and Taka remaining, of course. They're going to be fighting this. It's OT. They've got loads of money. And why the hell not? But there you go. Golden. He's had that big round we spoke about. Leaves just Taka remaining. The nade is going to do a little bit of damage. But ultimately, he might just want to save the Krieg. He's looking to see what he can get from this. The exit frags being the ideal point. Crims in the air. Quite high up. Left himself very susceptible. He was in quite a frightening height. And he just slammed back down to reality. Taco doing so much work. He's still got time. He's got a kit. He's had a 4K into the round. This could be the dream scenario for him. He sneaks onto the bomb. JW's left in a 1v1. He's got to go for the jump shot, but there's no possibility for it. Taco takes the round. What on earth? I honestly thought at a point in that he was just going to save the creek. <laughs> microphone muted. Microphone activated. Microphone muted. Microphone activated. Okay. Of course, he's gonna lose on that fight. Gold zero with the ump. Able to take down Grass faction to help equalize things, and they more importantly rescue the op that Olaf Monster dropped. So Brook is able to have that in his hands. Going back to you said, I mean, if the A-set's working for you, why change it? And it seems like Hunter Thieves will be doing that. All they have to really deal with is the op out of Brokey, however. Look at the time. There's only 30 seconds left. This late smoke could actually cause some problems. And yeah, you can see it's going to have to execute through it. But Brokey caught out a little bit in terms of space. That Molotov's done so much damage, though. Cold with the UMP has gone huge in this round. Even retrieves an AK for his troubles. And with 15 seconds left, they still haven't cleared the man at the back of the side. Brocky is well aware, but he may not even be near it. The Brazilian just going ham. Five kills, an ace total. And, well, that's sort of what we talk about when we talk about FaZe Clan. They've got five superstars. Train and office. Office is, 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 is on a whole other level, though. It took my dirt on the screen and says, Did you know the line, Dance Putted Upper Bell, the chorus, refers to using... Say for with you, please. Thank you. Thank you, bro. <laughs> you music! <laughs> what an <a> MVP. <laughs> keep playing, go, go, keep playing, keep playing. Jaws defeat, Flusher. He's blind, however. He can't fight because of it. They get on towards ramp as well. Fallen, he's there trying to stay alive with just 16 HP. JW with the AWP, it's going to be a little bit weird in a close angle like that. But here comes the golden boy. Big man golden himself. Playing around the smoke, but he won't need to do too much. As Crims is doing everything, the Krieg of Crims is unbeatable. Well, to follow up on that, so sure they're going to take care of that. Doesn't look too great. Down to one HP at one bullet as well. And now NIP have access to the site and a distinct numbers advantage. Ethan and Breezy, though, a powerful combination of talent not quite going to be able to tap away at Forest's head a second now for the veteran Breezy's not gotten the health to go for a one versus three he's having trying to do the ridiculous and he's done it many times but not this time 12 now to four as NIP are looking to finish this one quick yeah pretty textbook approach Evman. Team Liquids such a strong position you know we heard that they were feeling very confident coming out of their boot camp into this tournament and so far, the, it's been working out for them. Looks like he's got a mouse problem, Dan. I don't know what, uh, <laughs> what Stewie's trying to do there, but hopefully he fixes it soon. Perhaps he needs to clear his trackball. Ten rounds for Team Liquid. Astralis having a really bad start to the CT side. Um, pretty much, a, well, I guess he had a bad... This is like the most ideal situation for him. Spot to Olaf Meister, we own Nico's low, like you mentioned. 18 HP. Liaz, can he clutch this out? The bomb's gonna be down towards the top of the middle. Nico has snuck his way up though. And Lia's actually just gone straight towards B. So could Nico flank in behind Lia's?
Will the hunter become the hunted? This is going to become a big game of Ring Around the Rosie. I wonder if they're just going to go. He has all to the run, though. Back. I mean, Nico's going to have to run eventually because there's 20 seconds left. He needs to pick up the bomb. Lies is going to spot this out. And then he can just kind of play safe. The only way I think that Nico wins this is if he gets behind him. But yeah, at this point. Oh, no. He okay. doesn't have time. Yeah. This is already done. I think he's so confused as to where Lies has just gone. And uh, yeah, Lies has just won the round. Like, Nico has been well and truly bamboozled. Counter terrorists win. Are looking so strong at the moment. They just seem to always know exactly what's going on. And my BR missed a trick there, not trading JW because look what he did in the rest of the round. Devastated them, and he's wearing a Hello Kitty jersey to boot. <laughs> Seven to one. In the meantime, MIBR will focus on a short position. Yeah, problems put out of position as Flash of Rotates in, and he's able to catch Lucas. This is looking quite difficult, but they do just about have some position to work from. Flash has got to go absolutely huge from this position. Golden is not there to help him directly. Flusher picks up one, wraps around the side, and he is doing massive damage. USP comes out. Flusher, he can't do it though. KNG just barely clutches it, and that is a round for MIBR. It is one of the very few rounds that they've a little bit of a worry there. JW just going to take the sheer amounts of map control and the aggression. They check! Nice shot from Taco. He doesn't even have a Deeg this time. He's got the 5-7. There's going to be a trade back, but in return for a dink onto Brolin. Lots of damage being done. In fact, they are getting bogged down. They need to get their move on here. They've got a couple of smokes available to them to make the cross. Flashbang going to be coming through. Taco! Oh, sorry, Lucas even hits the shot. So many players dying within a matter of seconds. It's starting to get very confusing, but JW... He's caught that kill. In from behind again. He's going to get another. Maybe the UMP's his weapon of choice. His tackle will fall to Crims. 29 kills to his name. A triple again. They're still stuck. They're just stuck here by the t red container. What can they possibly do? Astralis don't have to do anything because time is on their side as well. 35 seconds. One man for every 10 seconds on the clock for Sharks. Again, it's about those dry peaks and finally get an opening, but they won't make their way in towards many, it seems, as Leo Drunk is taken out outside. Dupree patiently waits. Nobody in heaven just yet. There's still a chance for this. To oh my god, it's a two versus two. They've got a chance to plant the bomb. We've got a Molotov going up towards the heaven position. How on earth have they turned this around? It was looking so unlikely. Glaive just with the footsteps will take Lucan out, which leaves Exit alone. Really knows his angles, doesn't he, Glaive? But yes, Exit, he has a good opportunity to make this one work. Krieg, oh, Glaive, he's got such a forward position, the off-angle unexpected. And that's a nice clutch from Glaive to start. That kill through the smoke, reading the sound, as you said, the footsteps, and knowing exactly what that, those sounds in those loca that location. I mean, I remember, did, I remember Sponge did say about Fnatic that, at least the older Fnatic, before we saw uh, Gold with it. What? Where did that bullet go? Rotate every CT to go protect the bomb. And again, just and, and so take this opportunity to throw props again to Tarek for hitting those first two shots. Because the bomb goes down if he misses one of those. He hits absolutely every shot. That's so uh, phenomenal in this position as well. Tying it up 12 to 12. But indeed, you know, if you give Astralis any, any room to work. Be careful peeking in for long. Doesn't have much support. The flashbang though from Flusher. This tag team continues. Oh, Nade's going to be going down. I'm not sure that's quite what he meant to do. The smoke eventually will follow. He just tries to survive. He needs this kill, and he gets it as well. That's the bomb drop. Brolin can continue his but two. And now EG arrive, but so does Cirque in the kill feed. Plopsky's playing the waiting game. Forrest will find another overextension from Tarek. Four versus four. The bomb can go down. Plopsky to contest, and another one from Cirque. You said he had to be proactive, and he is just zipping up the body bags. Three remain for the CTs. They're all wounded, though, on this post plant for EG, and they're just starting to drop like flies. Lecro's got another. Breezy gone. Stan and Ethan with 38 points of health between them, now just 21. Oh. Stan has got something here. The plan was something. The one that's unlikely to have much impact on the right, A UMP. Fairly unlikely. Brolin has tried to take a leaf out of S Tag's book with just knowing the sprays. Crim's trying to make sure his record's not broken by stealing the kill. What has just happened there? How does how does he take so little damage? That was like a full clip just sprayed by KNG. There's a second assist for Brolin. 
while Lucas he runs to try and retrieve that weapon. Two with the goal. bomb now planted. Lucan covering the back. Oh, he's so favorable in this position, but that's such a great swing from Dupree. Gets the instant thing. That pressure forces back Lucan. James, he's still on the bomb side there with the Krieg, looking to try and defend. He's repositioning as well. This is getting really awkward here for Sharks, as that repositioning may have been just a beautiful stroke of genius there. Zipex now the 1v1, and of course he's able to do it. Zipex always reliable, and that's going to be it. It's going to be... Back they go. I think Snappy's going to have heard all the footsteps. That'll be a lot of information, but... He's a little bit worried that this might just be some bait there. Making a lot of noise. Stack going to rotate in and Brup has found the kill nonetheless. Golden making his way forward. May not expect anybody to be here. Stack this is risky and he doesn't get the kill. Golden's found two looking for his third at that. And this round has just fallen completely on his head. There were two players ready and waiting for a man with only 30 HP. A nice shot from KD and we'll get rid of actually Crims. And now Golden who's fallen back, looks to try and close this out. He needs a 4K to do it. He started this off fantastically well. 26 kills to his name. Now looks to try and bait that timer down a little bit. KD going to be waiting, but he finds the kill again. And now Barop. I don't know if he even has the time for this. There's no kit available to him. I think Golden might just have it. What a round from him. Four kills to close out this map, 28 Flash doesn't stop Tarek keeping him safe. Another nade added to the mix, which does keep things level. Damn, that is a nasty way to go about starting a round for EG, especially already 4-0 down. Yeah, while smokes have been exchanged towards B, they've got banana control, but it cost them so much HP at this point. Orb set up towards the coffin position. That'll be in the hands of Nitro. Very well versed in the defensive sniping, that's for sure. Waiting for a boost. But at this point, what's the next move? You've got two smokes, make it three, which is a single flashbang. So they've deployed one of those already. I think that was towards middle. So you're just going to try and suggest, well, maybe we're going with some mid control here, but it's going to be another B finish, but only one player waiting for them. Nitro with the AWP, smoked out, has to reposition, and he'll go towards new boxes. I feel like it was a lot of the success that Liquid have had on B so far was down to the supportive flashbangs. Yeah. We saw even another one going towards pool from Nitro last round. Now, I feel like Nitro could be in a spot of bother. Naf does arrive exactly when he needs to. He gets the kill. It's another weapon going to be rescued, but still going to be Renegades on the attack. Utility a little bit light. They still have some smokes to close off a lot of different angles here. Ooh. Like double smoke doors. No, they miss. This is a bit awkward. This is a 2v2. Oh no, the knife comes out. He's just gonna split wild. He can't find him. He doesn't know where he is. He got the defuse. Chase Hold him. it off. Oh no. I think they might have to, considering their money is around $2,000 for a player. It was uh, a pretty underwhelming final effort there, but they didn't really have a lot to work with. The grenades are running thin, they've lost map control, they've been pushed out or bullied out of the B-bomb site. Had to go through A, and we saw that approach, it's a very common one, can be very effective, but it's all down to the timings. You have to catch them off guard, you have to catch them with a grenade in the hand, or a CT in transition, but it was very obvious. With even with full control towards B, they had a full setup of crossfires towards the A site. It was never really going to work out, but they had to do something. This looks like a nice quick push, and Cirque, what? Barely blinks, and another wow. one! Wow! Rez plucked out of the air, he's looking for a third. It's gonna be Ethan to keep him safe and sound. Forrest, however, looking to press the issue, and it's two kills out of very little investment before the round does reach its logical conclusion. Which just comes down to this, the lone wolf, the superstar sniper of JW, who has to try and punish them as they'll head over towards the bomb. Still paranoid about his location. They flash out the fallen to face it. Fallen falls, and it's all on Taco. He can't do it. 14-14, Fnatic. They bring it back. And that was all JW. Like, like, we've been singing the praises of one man, of course, but JW with an important 4K, maybe the most important one of the entire map as he's now going to do serious... Plotsky will trade the frag, but where's the last man? It's Sanji. Plopsky has a smoke grenade. He comes out the side of the smoke and takes Sanji out as well. Beautiful work from Ninjas in Pajamas. Great clutch from Plopsky. Seems unstoppable. There's a good possibility here that Fur is not going to be expecting this. We're going to have the SG thrown over to Brolin. Krim's happy to just be cannon fodder in this scenario. And Fur's just slowly seeking out the map, trying to work out where these players have currently gone. As they do look to cross, he's going to hold on to it. He should have to kill the free onto Krims. That's the first. Second going to be coming in as well. Nice work from Fur. Four kills needed for him to win a round where I felt like that should have been done way earlier. Yeah, great individual brilliance, though. <laughs>
taxes for. But